In this video, we'll explore how to perform a chi-square test to analyze whether there's a relationship between two categorical variables. We'll follow a five-step hypothesis testing procedure to assess this association. Let's consider the following case study, where we want to investigate the relationship between exercise preference and sleep quality. Here a sample of adults was categorized into three exercise groups, cardio, weight training, and none. Their sleep quality was then rated as good, fair, or poor. The data is presented in a two-way contingency table. We'll use a chi-square test to determine if there's a statistically significant association between these two categorical variables, with a significance level set at 0.01. In the next few slides, we will walk through a five-step hypothesis testing procedure. We'll begin by formulating null and alternative hypotheses. In the context of this case study, the null hypothesis states that there is no association between exercise preference and sleep quality. In other words, the distribution of sleep quality is independent of the exercise preference among the adults in the study. The alternative hypothesis tests the claim that a statistically significant association exists between exercise preference and sleep quality. This suggests that the distribution of sleep quality is not independent of exercise preference. There could be a difference in the proportions of people experiencing good, fair, or poor sleep across the three exercise categories. In the second step, we'll verify that the data meets certain statistical assumptions and once assumptions are confirmed, we'll compute the test statistic. For the chi-square test to be valid, we assume a random sample, categorical variables with mutually exclusive categories, and sufficient expected frequencies in each contingency table cell. To calculate the chi-square test statistic for independence, we first need to calculate the expected frequencies using the following formula, which determines how many adults would fall into each sleep quality category for each exercise preference group assuming no association between the variables. Now, Calculate the squared deviations by subtracting the expected frequency from the observed frequency for each cell in the contingency table and square the difference, then divide each squared deviation by its corresponding expected frequency. Add up these values to obtain the chi-square statistic value. This value represents the contribution of the ith cell to the chi-square statistic. Now, we'll first calculate row and column totals alongside the overall total observed count, then, we'll use the expected value formula to calculate the expected frequencies in each cell of the contingency table. In the same contingency table, we'll calculate the contribution of each cell to the chi-square statistic using the observed and expected frequencies. Now, add up these values to obtain the chi-square statistic value. The calculated chi-square statistic is 17.6. The next step of the hypothesis test is to calculate the p-value, for that, we require the degrees of freedom value. Under the null hypothesis, the chi-square statistic follows a chi-square distribution with r minus 1 times c minus 1 degrees of freedom where r is the number of row categories and c is the number of column categories in the contingency table. The degrees of freedom value is 4. You can find the p-value associated with a chi-square statistic of 17.60 by looking up the row for degrees of freedom value of 4 in a chi-square distribution table. The table will show you the range of p-values within which your chi-square statistic falls. The p-value corresponding to the chi-square statistic of 17.60 lies between 0.005 and 0.001. In the fourth step, the p-value approach is used to make a decision about the null hypothesis. A small p-value that is less than the significance level value suggests rejecting the null hypothesis, while a large p-value that is greater than the significance level suggests failing to reject it. In this case, the p-value is less than 0.01 which suggests rejecting the null hypothesis. Now, in the fifth and final step, we will conclude the summary of the hypothesis test. Since the null hypothesis was rejected at a 1% significance level, 
there is sufficient evidence to conclude that a statistically significant association exists between exercise preference and sleep quality. This means the distribution of sleep quality is not independent of exercise preference.